So right now we're standing at a place called the Adit Ni, and uh, you can see there's a little bend here which gives it that name. And uh, this passageway down which we came from now is called uh, the Water Channel, and uh, that's where the water used to run. At the end there, there's a 15 meter drop straight down for the water to go. And the water came flooding down from the northern mines, which are four kilometers further that way, to the end spot which I showed you on the map. And the passageway, the passageway right here is uh, called Christian the Seventh Addict, and that's the same one as it took the train earlier. If you go all the way to the bottom, you will reach the train tracks which we traveled on earlier. And uh, there used to go trains up here as well, uh, back in the days. Now, uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about the workers who used to work here. Uh, originally, originally, as I mentioned, they came from Germany in 1624 and 23. Uh, because uh, Christian IV, he had contacts in Germany, in the mining societies, in Sachsen and places like that. And in uh, 23 and 24, there came about 96 German workers to start up the mines for us. And that's why all the na names of the mines are German, and uh, they're built using German methods. Now, uh, there came some more German workers after a while, because in 1630 there was an epidemic which actually wiped out all of the original workers. So we needed some more. And uh, the, the German workers, after a while, started educating Norwegian workers. And then the Norwegians would take over after a while. And uh, the Norwegian workers had some of the best welfare offers at the time. They had, for example, a pension scheme. They had sick pay. They had free health care, including surgeon, doctor and medicine. Now the medicine was just liquor back then, but that was fine. It was free. Uh, and um, they, um, uh, yeah, all these uh, wonderful offers, because they needed a lot of attractive, attractive offers to uh, want to work here, because of course it's a very dangerous place. And uh, another thing was that their family had first priority to start working here. So the children, their sons, could start working here. And they started when they were eight year old which is very uh, bad. And uh, the, mines the silver mines realized this, the leaders. In uh, the 1700s, they raised the age limit to about 15 instead, and started this education program where the children could uh, uh, learn about mining, and uh, as well, ad adults as well could uh, train there. And so they had some expertise and experience once they started working at age 15. Um, but the, the, the jobs the children had was basically taking out uh, rocks, uh, taking out sand and uh, watching the horses going in and out and uh, watching the elevators and things like that. Uh, but all in all, it was a very good place to work, uh, considering, even though it was dangerous. But they had a lot of offers. Now, I was talking uh, earlier about the fire setting and the smoke. You can see this passageway is quite different from the ones we went through uh, downstairs, because they have used fire setting right here. Uh, the walls are uh, much blacker from the smoke and everything. And uh, the curved ceiling is also a result of the flames. And you can see right behind you here the firewall which they built to contain the smoke to the ceiling. Uh, they used to have these firewalls everywhere they were, where they were using fire setting. Smoke went up and was contained up there, and then it went all, all along the passageway until it reached a separate mine built, uh, a shaft built especially just for the smoke, so that it could go all the way out of the mines without coming down to hurt the workers. So after they built these, they could reach about seven meters a month instead of just three. I guess because the morale was a bit higher, they probably knew we weren't going to die coming to work that day, which was a good thing. And they could stay down here for much longer and work much harder for a longer extended period of time. So, um, but all in all, a great place to work for the families of the miners, maybe not so much for the miners themselves, but their families was well uh, looked after. Um, yeah. Any questions before we go down uh, further? Yeah, you had uh, you needed a lot of wood, firewood or uh, wood. Yes. So all the wood I think were cut down in the mountains here. Yeah, exactly right. Uh, the farmers were um, forced actually to do that to bring uh, woods for their from their own farms and woods here to the mines because we needed a lot of it, of course. And um, in the beginning they were paid quite little as well, so they weren't very happy. But after a while they fought their way to a much higher wage so that the uh, farmers actually started fighting between each other on who actually got to take the wood. So, um, but they were, they were the only people who were actually forced to work for the mines themselves. Um, but yeah, the, the, the woods were all barren, there were no, almost no trees. But luckily the trees on above us have uh, grown up again. Yeah. So that's good. Uh, in Rødos, for example, there is complete, there's no trees now. Um, yeah.
Okay, let's continue.